motorcycle riding armed bandits operating out of abandoned forest reserves are ransacking communities in Nigeria's northwest. The groups are the latest to join Nigeria's lucrative kidnap for ransom industry, and are quite brazen in their operations. In the last decade more than 8,000 people have been killed in the states of Kebi, Sokoto, Niger, and Zamfara, according to the International Crisis Group. But recent attacks in the president's home state of Katsina, where more than 100 people were killed in attacks between April and June, have led to protests and calls for his resignation. On two separate occasions the bandits targeted villagers who had received food handouts from the government during the coronavirus lockdown. They were about 200 on motorbikes, each bike rider carried a passenger and they all carried AK-47 guns, an eyewitness, said. The herders are mostly nomadic and can be found on major highways and streets across the country herding their cattle but they have become involved in deadly clashes with farmers in Nigeria's northwestern and central states. This is because these areas have suffered massive deforestation, due to the impact of the Sahara Desert spreading south, causing arable farming land to disappear and water to become scarce. Armed groups within Fulani communities are being accused of resorting to criminality. The herders now see kidnapping and pillaging as more lucrative than the herding. The biggest cow would go for 200,000 naira but one kidnapping would fetch millions. Our cows have been rustled. The bandits are a bunch of criminals comprising all sorts of groups. We have lost 30% of cattle in Nigeria to different types of crises, Metiala's National Secretary Barbara Othman Jelzema said. He said the attackers in Nigeria's northwest were foreign herders from neighboring countries. Nigeria's northwest, an area almost the size of the UK, borders Niger and criminal gangs crisscross between the two countries, evading security. The borders are porous and the vast forest reserves in the border regions have been turned into operational bases for the bandits. Police say the attacks in the northwest are being carried out by criminal gangs, as well as Fulani herdsmen. The Fulani herders suddenly realized that they now have arms to protect themselves. But they are not just protecting themselves, they are also going after those who wronged them in the past. Kidnapping for ransom is widespread in Nigeria, with victims forced to pay between $20 and $200,000 for their freedom. At its height in 2017 and 2018, the major road connecting the capital Abuja in central Nigeria to Kaduna in the northwest had 10 kidnappings per day with 20 different groups operating on the route. Nigeria's military is currently carrying out an operation on the orders of the president to sweep bandits and kidnappers out of his home state. Mr. Bahari has also attempted to solve the underlying reasons for the conflict by proposing raising reserves for the herders. But in a country divided along ethnic lines, many powerful state governors refused to buy into the project, accusing the president, a Fulani, of hatching a plan to seize land for his ethnic group. It is increasingly clear that the lines between the farmer herder clashes and banditry are becoming more blurred in the northwest and as the Katsina state governor learned, bandits do not keep their word.